What's up, everybody? It's Alan the Kraken, and today on TCG Economics, we are going to talk about the concerns over oversaturation of the TCG market. Now, if you are concerned about the oversaturation of the market, consider this. 3,000 new board games are made each year for the tabletop industry. And those game stores generally pick the cream of the crop. They're picking board games that are engaging, people are playing them, people are collecting them. Collecting board games is also a very popular um, uh, industry and in, in, in hobby. Um, we're also seeing a lot of uh, a lot of like distribution, cherry picking which games they want to work with based on the creator's views and creator's philosophy behind their their board games. And I feel like we're going to start to see that more and more with TCGs as more TCGs start to come out of the woodwork. And when I say that TCGs might get 50 to 75 new games each year, I'm talking about games that are actually being distributed, people, uh, people that are receiving cards. We're not talking about like Board Game Geek or... Japan made games where they're on tabletop simulator and people are playing them until they finally, you know, do a print and play. We're not talking about those. We're talking about games that are actually getting distributed either through Kickstarter or GameFound or on many of the other TCG distribution sources throughout the world. Um, so we're going to have to see um, the cream of the TCG crop come up and we're going to have to start picking and choosing and voting with our dollars about which games we want to see succeed. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get one new TCG per day in the next two years. And this is why it's important to start having standards about which games we want. And again, vote accordingly with our wallets. It's also why I've brought up only covering TCGs that make it to TCG player to have a 20 million site visit cushion. And when you get that kind of exposure as a card game, it really, really does solidify yourself in the marketplace, um, especially now more than ever. Um, let's take a look at, so first off, the Washington Post citation is just uh, confirming that 3,000 new board games are made each year. That is where that citation comes from. But now we're going to look at this Wii Market Research.com reports trading card game market. And take a quick gander. Now, we're not going to pay for this report. There is an option to pay for a more detailed report. We're not even going to do, deal with that. Um, the only people that really need to deal with that are the, the managers of TCGs and stuff that want to figure out what's working and carve out a path. Uh, but here we have the market forecast of 2022. That was going to be $6.4 billion. Uh, market forecast for 2033, 10 years from now, is going to be almost double to 11 Point seven billion dollars and that is a compound annual growth rate for the trading card game market of 7.8 percent and that my friends that percent is why there are new card games coming out that is why new people and investors and collectors are investing in the trading card game space is because they're carving out that 7.8 percent annual growth rate, compound annual growth rate. Um, and we're going to see this affect the entire trading card game industry. Now, we we may see that Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! retrace down so that there could be sideway movement in a lot of these new games. And this is also what happens when um, large new markets for new assets come out uh we saw that like i hate to mention this but we saw this happen with coins we saw that ha have this happen with stamps we've seen this happen with anything that has a limited finite supply of goods that are being introduced to the greater market that people can collect and enjoy what we don't see currently with new trading card games is a ton of 
massive, massive like investments into them. These games are mostly being crowdfunded and mostly being funded through passion and uh, the players and collectors. That is how a lot of these games are getting funded. So that pool of investor or, or that pool of investment, I guess, capital would start to decline as more and more games start entering the market. And you're going to see less and less new games enter the market unless we start seeing a more institutionalized investing in TCG businesses by banks, by um, investment groups. Until we start seeing that movement, uh, this is how the market is going to run. We're going to see a lot of uh, crowdfunded TCGs come into the market. Um, and that, that right there is acting as a rationing device. So a rationing device is basically saying like, hey, how can we stop a million trading card games entering the market? Well, that rationing device is money. And that's why resources can be allocated to the better products in the trading card game industry because we're all talking, we're all engaged in the product, we're all discussing, and we're all putting our money where our mouths are and putting money towards the games that we enjoy and love. And if that, that funding and that wallet fatigue continues, that investment from the crowdfunding will stop. I don't think the crowdfunding thing is going to be sustainable unless more people start acting responsibly with their crowdfunding investments. And instead of going all in on one game, they go 10% on one game, 10% on another game, 10% on another game, 10% on another game. You diversify across all your different assets. Even in traditional investing, you're supposed to do that. So... Again, this is not financial advice at all. This is just me discussing openly where the market is heading, why we are seeing a bunch of new games, why there's that feeling that the TCG market is getting oversaturated when in fact it's really not. It's just that everybody has been focused on the top three, the big three, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! People have been focused on that for 25 years. They're, they're not looking at the last five years. They're not looking at this renaissance of TCGs entering the market. And f just for me, personally, I'm really, really excited to see all of this new innovation in the TCG space. Um, I'm playing games that are just light years ahead of the big three, but people are so ingrained in the big three and they have so much invested into it, so much time, personal time invested into the big three, it is hard to shake them off the, those trees. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this industry is going to grow when we are looking to have almost double the current market forecast. Is it going to grow sideways where we have thousands of TCGs that are budding and growing? Or are we going to see maybe 100, a top 100 TCGs where the cream of the crop and meritocracy takes hold where the better games and the better collecting and the better plans, the better business strategies, um, the better the lore, the better the everything. Is that cream of the crop going to prevail or are we just going to go from game to game to game and, and hop? and hop and hop. So it's going to be very interesting to see. So far, people are hopping. I would like to see more of realizing, hey, this is a great game, and it's probably going to be around for 10 years. I'm going to put more money into it, and I'm going to try out some new games. I want to see more of that. Because I feel like that is a more healthy approach to taking the new TCG market as it grows the next 10 years into 2033. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Remember to have fun. You all have a wonderful day. And peace.